Welcome to Love, Dream, Live, your source of life lessons that inspire you to love intensely, dream relentlessly, and live passionately. Our goal is to help you create harmony in your work, personal life, and self-discovery journey. Welcome your host, Aida, with today's topic. Hey there, welcome. Today we're going to be talking about how every screen that we own is a doorway to escape reality and how our TVs, our computers, our tablets, and our smartphones are continuously leading us away from ourselves, making it easier for us to run away than to actually live in the moment. I think technology is amazing and exciting, yet never before have we had so much technology that facilitates our escape from reality and frees us from the burden, the daily burden, of living in the present moment each and every single day. I think most of this was started back in the day with TV because TV allows us to take a peek at other people's lives, problems, relationships, and forget about our problems and distract ourselves from our own lives. And why are we so wrapped up in other people's relationships, problems, and lives? Is it because our lives aren't interesting enough? Is it because our lives aren't dramatic enough, controversial enough, so we have to kind of settle and assign more importance and give more attention to all the actors in all these different shows and movies? Although TV can be entertaining, it's also a way to help us disidentify with ourselves and from ourselves and delve into other worlds that are not really easy to access in any other way. Yet I also think that all these different shows and movies are so addicting because it's so much easier to be a spectator in other people's lives and so much more fun and entertaining than to deal with our own issues, with our own emotions, our own problems, and our own responsibilities. Whenever we're engaging in watching TV, we're like the outsider looking in and passively observing and absorbing other people's emotions. So TV is definitely, I feel like, where it started to where we started to escape our reality because it enabled us to escape ourselves like never before. But then after that came the computer, this wonderful, magnificent screen that gives us the sense of control and gives us the ability to create and further escape reality by giving us unlimited access to other people and to other places. So the computer, I feel, has been a significant improvement because now it's a two-way flow. And so we are actually deliberately choosing what we're wanting to look for or what we're wanting to read or what we're wanting to pay attention to. So it allows us to create a better version of our reality whenever we decide to watch a video or read a blog post or engage in other social media channels that temporarily connect us to other people. And even though the connection and communication may be very superficial, we still feel like we're getting interaction and we're getting feedback on our thoughts and our emotions. So we actually decide to filter through our emotions and only display our favorable side, our likable side. We want people to like us. We want people to accept us. And so instead of sharing how we're really feeling and who we really are, we start to share whatever the latest stories are, whatever the latest trends are. We decide to chime in and contribute to the conversation. And the internet is so addicting because there's so many stories. There's so many people. It's also very overwhelming. And then Next thing you know, it's 10 o'clock at night and you've got nothing done because you've been on the computer all day distracted and now you've got nothing to show and guess what? Your problems are still all there. It's interesting to me how nowadays there's an actual fear of missing out whenever we don't participate in social media, but that's a really an illusion because the real fear of missing out is that you're missing out from your life by continually escaping and being in front of a screen that might actually make you feel even more isolated and more unfulfilled at the end of the day. Although some computer usage is actually necessary if you work on the computer, using it as a way of entertainment and distraction will eventually backfire. So now let's go on to the phones. Like our cell phones are just amazing, wonderful devices that give us the ability to escape reality in one second's notice. At the top of our finger, boom, log into Facebook, boom, log into Instagram, Twitter, 
you're gone. You are instantly transported to a world where everybody is sharing their pictures, their tweets, or their stories. Even though our phones are excellent communication tools, just because you're able to do something on it doesn't mean that you really need to do something on it. Most of what we can do on our phones can actually wait. But because we have become so used to instant gratification, we don't want to wait. We want it now and then our phones give us this comfort, this illusion that we have power over them and that we're able to access anything from anywhere. When in reality, we are a slave to our phones. We can't sleep without them. We can't go anywhere without them. We feel naked without them. Yet every single app, every single function of our phone is designed for us to use it longer and to become addicted to it. And this doesn't just apply to adults, it also applies to kids. So it's no wonder why our attention span is declining, why we have no patience, and why we have such difficulty living in the present moment. Our phones are actually a little bit more tricky than our computers and our TVs because our phones give us the illusion that we can capture moments, that we can record experiences, that we can share, that we can like. But most importantly, it gives us the illusion that we belong. But not without sacrificing our ability to live in the present moment and actually engage people face to face in a real life conversation without the barriers of technology. Because no matter how wonderful and powerful your phone is, nobody can hug you through your phone. Nobody can really smile at you directly through your phone. And if most of our communication when we're in person is actually on visual cues, and those cues are stripped out from phone communication, then even our communication to a certain degree is very limited and lacks the substance and meaning behind a true connection. But just having the illusion of belonging is what actually makes phones so addicting and enables us to escape our reality even more than computers or televisions. And today there's so many more emerging technologies like watches, tablets, and other wearables that are also new doorways for us to escape ourselves. But the real question is, what are we running away from? Other generations didn't really have this luxury. They just had to deal with their problems. So this kind of creates a shortcut that leads us away from ourselves as a way to get relief and not as a way to actually address the issues at hand. So I really encourage you to use technology as a tool that improves and enhances your life but not as a way to escape reality and avoid your emotions, your problems, and your responsibilities in life. Now, don't get me wrong. I really love technology, and I actually use it to make a living every single day, but not without reminding myself that I need to be completely aware of how it impacts me on an emotional, psychological, and social level. I make it a point to completely disconnect from all technologies. And I also make sure that on Saturday, I do not get on my computer at all or use my phone for any kind of business because everything is changing so fast. It's moving so fast and it could be really overwhelming. But the truth is that technology is changing and evolving and people are not. People aren't really needing to evolve because they can just escape from reality. So why evolve? It's so much easier to numb ourselves and to live in avoidance and continuously run and hide from our problems. And having access to all these technologies makes it so much faster, so much easier, and so much more convenient. So we get to thinking, why be here if I could be there? Why be here if I could do this and be somewhere else? Take a look at your own life and look around at the different ways that technology is impacting you. And pay attention to see if it's actually connecting you more to the people in the world that matters to you or if it's actually driving you further from it. Because even though technology changes, people don't change. People crave security and comfort and familiarity. So do we really need all of this technology or are we creating a complicated world for simple people? Since everything is so new right now, it's really difficult to predict the long-term effects. So only time will tell if all of these wonderful and exciting technologies are actually helping us move further or if they're actually holding us back. Thank you for tuning in and I'll see you again next time. Thank you for joining us today. Don't forget to subscribe and share this episode with a friend. Visit lovedreamlive.com for more. And remember to stop waiting. Decide to choose yourself. You can experience unconditional love. 
create the life of your dreams, and live in harmony and abundance every single day. See you again soon.